Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Ask Weldon show. As you can see, I'm in Berlin. I've got a little bit of a different streaming layout. Of course, I stream the show live, but I'm also recording it for you guys, the YouTube audience. So you can see that the uh, the people here in chat will be will be enjoying it. And after the show, I'll be diving into questions with them. So if you want to catch the show live, come to twitch.tv slash Mind Games Weldon. Today we have a bunch of really awesome questions. Uh, the topic is Can NBA LCS find the leadership to dominate, climbing to platinum, and how to turn off competitive mode? That is mentally. Ask Weldon episode 145. As always, I'm Weldon. I'm a sports psychology trainer and an esport coach and esports psychology trainer. And I've worked with a number of pro teams to help them hit higher levels of performance and win a lot of titles for regional titles, I guess, at this point. Uh, I say regional titles, but it was like the NALCS twice and the EU LCS twice. Those are regional titles. Also, EU LCS is technically an international title, just FYI. Oh, maybe that's why the EU LCS is better than the NALCS. International competition every week. Okay, so let's jump into the first question. Here we are from Joe Truvio. Joe Truvo on Twitter, and he asks, how do you think new organizations funded by traditional sports orgs will find that leadership or special sauce to dominate the LCS? So this is in response to the Dardock video that I made. If you haven't seen that, please go check it out. And essentially he's asking, here we have TSM, C9, you know, sitting at the top, 100 Thieves is up there. Where are these these NBA funded organizations going to find the leadership that also knows eSport to actually dominate the LCS. And I think the answer is we're sitting right there with a hundred thieves slot. So Golden Guardians, not doing so well. Uh, but if you look at Echo Fox and a hundred thieves, what they did was they combined their, their drive with innate talent, right? So they, they partnered with people who are in the esports scene already that are talented at leadership that are talented at setting up competitive organizations that are talented at winning and uh then they then they both of them i think brought in a very strong uh achievement culture uh echo fox being very very athletic at its core nade shots organization being very very i would say like tsm you know like incredibly strong head on top uh, a CEO that is willing to put himself out there to vlog, to to support his athletes, to be in the gaming house, you know, to, to throw himself into the team. And I think that that has always behooved Reginald very well on TSM. And I think that other owners started copying him. I remember a year and a half ago when Steve uh, finally started throwing himself in the middle of C9 problems. This was back when they were on course to get relegated after Meteos quit and the org was kind of like in danger of, uh, I think High had gone into retirement. Yeah, they were trying to replace him essentially and it wasn't going very well. And 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 instead of instead of waiting and hoping that the coach would solve it, he stepped in and solved it as the executive, right? As the chief executive of his organization. And Steve did a very similar thing when Liquid was facing relegations. You know, he made it his problem. He didn't put off the the responsibility anymore to his staff. And of course, it's wonderful if you can do that. It's wonderful if you were good enough to build a staff that you can rely on. But sometimes, when you're the chief executive, you just got to executive. You got to walk in there and solve a bunch of people problems and say this is what needs to happen. And I think that I think that NBA orgs need to partner with people like that. Or they need to find those people and hire them if they don't want to partner with them. And that's that's how they'll find that secret sauce. I think Echo Fox is going to do well this year. Let's see if they actually challenge DSM for the top. Okay. Second question. And I'm deploying my secret new technology here. Bam! New question. Look at this. The new question just popped up after I pasted it in my text file. George and Steven asks on Twitter, my friend and I are silver for years and are wanting to seriously climb to platinum this year. Is it 
better to play more games or go over replays and play less games? So I don't know the answer to this question. It's kind of dependent on you and your learning style. I personally played less games to get to platinum. I needed quanti quality over quantity. I was playing too many games. I wasn't studying enough. I think the answer is if you're not studying at all your own games, and you're not going into a game with a goal, you need to play less so that you can study your game and so you're going to go into the game with a goal. If you are studying your replay and you are going into your game with a goal, then you don't, you know, then you're fine. You can, uh, you can keep training. If you can't find anything to learn from your studying, I wouldn't increase your studying. I would get a coach to kind of break through that plateau to show you what to look for. That'll increase the quality of the time you already spend studying rather than just trying to study more and then not get anything out of it because you don't really know what to look for. That would be my recommendation. Short, simple, to the point, answers the question. Let's move on, everybody. Next question. Boom. Okay, Alex Decane on Twitter asks, I find no self-satisfaction in playing solo queue playing solo queue however with the intent to become a better or the best player i can for my best of five teams really motivates me and has led to massive improvement can someone who doesn't find satisfaction in solo queue still go pro i have some good for news for you alex decane you have become a pro player in mindset i don't think that I don't think you can actually go pro unless you are playing solo queue with the intent to improve versus for fun. Now, some people are in a flow state and they're striving to improve and it is fun. They take joy in that self-improvement, right? But the origin, the source of that joy is the striving of self-improvement through solo queue. So personally, I think that the fundamental pillar of mental resilience is that you're able to do a certain behavior because you value the outcome of that behavior and you're able to take joy in the process even if you don't take joy in the actual act of that thing independent of any other kind of like tied in values. So what you're doing is you have this connected value of this thing that you want and you're using it to discipline your behavior which and then is rewarding you with with joy and motivation which are emotions of that process of improvement. So you've, you've gotten there, that's fine. You've hit it, congratulations. Keep going. Okay. Next question and the last one. And this is from anchor.fm. And I'm gonna try to play it basically right here on my mic for you. My name is Alex, and I enjoy studying games. I'm high rank in several games like League and StarCraft 2. My problem is that I can't turn the learning mode off. I maintain several friendships with out-of-town friends through games, and they often just play for fun. For example, I get frustrated when we're playing PUBG and I can't hear footsteps because of irrelevant conversation, or when they pick non-meta dual bot lanes like Lee Yasuo. How do I relax and enjoy the game while playing with them? The only time I seem to be able to do it is while drinking. Thanks. Love your stuff. Okay. Fantastic question from Alex. He asked, or he said, I enjoy studying games, but I can't turn the learning mode off. I think another word for that is simply the competitive mode. He can't turn the competitive mode off. How do I relax and enjoy the game with my friends? Okay, so first off, you need to square away your reason for your competitive mindset. Okay, so some people enjoy the learning process. Some people have goals related to that. And then there is this big component of self appearance and ego related to gameplay, especially in a social circle. So you need to unpack personally your social motivations and your face related motivations to wanting to play in a certain way. Because in order to relax and let go, you're going to need to make mistakes in front of your friends, suck in front of your friends, lose in front of other people in public on the internet, that is other people in your game. And you're gonna to need to be okay with looking like you're losing face in those situations. 
Okay? So for that, you need to have self-awareness over, over whether or not that causes pain for you and whether or not you can tolerate that pain. Okay? So these are related to things like your face, which is a Japanese term for like basically yourself, your appearance as you perceive it, others to have an appearance or an opinion of you. Uh, your your ego, I guess you would say, and your ability to let that go and accept the usually the discomfort of losing face, I would say. Okay, so once you have that self-aware and squared away, then you have your goals, right, and your values. Things like, oh, it's really fun for me if I'm doing this thing, and it's really fun for me if I'm achieving this goal. So if I'm not achieving this goal, and I'm not valuing the learning in this way, then what am I even enjoying in this game? And that's part of the problem is that there is literally nothing to enjoy in the game if you aren't doing your process. And so you need to actually train yourself to let go of your previous things that you enjoyed about the game and reprogram new things that you do enjoy about the game. And usually you start from the social aspect of that. So you say, I this is important to me because I value spending time with my friends. That's the basis of why you're forcing yourself to do this, right? If you don't value spending time with your friends, then this question is moot. Like, why try to give up this thing, part of yourself, to enjoy the game, okay? So, first of all, find the basis for your motivation. Value spending time with your friends, okay? Then focus on the things that you're doing with your friends and not the game. And you say like, okay, I'm focusing on my friend, a conversation. This is the this is the joy I get from that experience. This is the thing I value at the end of the video session with the, my video game session with my friend. I want him to say or be able to say to himself out loud, I really like Alex and I had a great night. I feel closer to him. I feel more bonded to him. I have memories of this day and I want to do the same thing again with him in the future. And I want to go to a sporting event with him and drink beer together. Uh, so you like you have this kind of picture of where you're headed, what you want to achieve with this social session. And that is what powers you. And then you're striving for a different thing, right? You can have a competitive mindset towards actually creating a good social interaction for yourself that you enjoy and for your friends that they enjoy. And then you have new goals. And so the game just simply becomes a mechanism through which you are experiencing that task. And that is how I would go about doing that. Remember, number one, square away self-awareness about this losing face thing and the pain and the discomfort you're going to have to tolerate for it. Number two, change your goals from the game to something that you actually value out of that game, which is why you're trying to do this change in the first place. And focus on that as the kind of inspirator for your values or for your actions i would guess inspiration for your actions okay that's the show you guys thank you so much for tuning in and as always you can check me out on my website mindgames.gg you can follow the show live on twitch twitch.tv slash mindgameswelden and you can subscribe below and like this video in order to have more content like this show up on your youtube app feed I make a show every day. I'm trying to, to basically, we have a large variety of shows in the in the book, in the docket now. There's a VOD review of the North American LCS. There is the Ask Weldon show. There's topical vlogs. And then there's also a podcast that's going to be coming out that is essentially an interview of elite performers in eSport and elite performers in the eSport field that are not players as well. And so please look forward to that and make sure that you follow me to Keep abreast of all of the content that is coming out. You can also check out, of course, my Mac program, which is the training program that I have used with professional teams, most notably TSM and CLG, and secondarily with G2, although it was an adapted version of that program. I do it live with them, but I've created a video, 50 video training course, like a 50 video, 50 day training course on my website, mygames.gg slash MAC is where you'll find the program. It's fairly inexpensive, and if you use the code hashtag ask well, forget the hashtag, use the code ask Weldon, you get an additional five dollars off. And then basically, you uh, you have seven seven weeks of seven sessions or lessons, and each lesson is a lecture, and then a mindfulness training session, and then a closing piece. And uh, it'll take you through 
the principles, the principles of high performance, mental resilience, focus. You can apply this in any area that is human performance. So we're not just talking about eSport, although I package it and wrap it up for eSport as, as, a, as an industry, as a, as a focus, because that is the, my focus of my training. But it applies, I mean, I get a lot of messages from people who say, hey, I became a better manager, I became a better parent, I became a better student because of the, the principles that I mastered doing this program. And it's not, I would say, in its final form yet. It's in its third version of this program. I'm currently working as of last week with a designer to try to get wireframes for a new app version of this program. I'm very excited about that. So be sure to check it out. Of course, as with all the previous iterations of this program, everybody who owns it owns it for life and are grandfathered into future versions. And uh, yeah, that's about all I have to say about that. Thanks again for tuning in, and I will see you guys next time.